Hi, I'm Alex Balt, editor-at-large from uh, Microwaves and RF, and I'm here today at the Things Network event here in Amsterdam with Wolfgang Weber. He's with Pepperell and Fuchs, which is a pretty big company. It's interesting you're here at the, at the show. How's the show been for you? Yeah, so far very well. I mean, we had already a very good experience last time. Uh, so it's the second time that we're exhibiting here. We were visitors before and then decided, oh, it's a good show. Yeah, And last year it was was excellent. And so far we are satisfied. Yeah. So you've got so you, good. more solutions that you have here at the event, more participation? Yes, yes everything. Yeah, OK. I mean, the stand is a little bit bigger <laughs> also, yeah. And we have a specifically designed a new display, yeah. For the event, see, there yeah, you go. Yeah, for the event, yeah, ready for the event, yeah. So now, but then also on the solution side, it's not just a new new booth and new display and all, you've got new products. Yeah. You've got a new version of your Wilson product here today. Yes, we have actually two things, yeah. One is a much longer range for our ultrasonic level measuring device, yeah. In the past, we ended with four meters. But when we got requirements from a customer that we have to measure longer distance, so we have a seven meters version now. Yeah, uh, that is one thing. And the other thing is a little bit similar what things offers. We have the Wills Note, which is more or less agnostic, and you can mount different sensors. Yeah, I mean, Pebble and Fuchs is traditionally a sensor manufacturer, so we have two, thousands of sensors. And the idea was okay. Uh, there might be other sensor technologies uh, where wireless technology makes sense. Yeah, And here we show, for instance, uh, our inductive sensor where you can simply check is the door open, closed, the canal deck uh, cover or whatever open, closed. Yeah, It's just an open, closed <laughs> uh, thing. But um, there are a lot of people asking for something like that. Well, yeah. you know, on the surface, open closed is a simple question, but yeah. in an industrial process or in a facility, or yeah. there's, a, there's a lot can happen there, you know. Yeah, and on the other side, you usually have no access to these places. Yeah, so you need something auto autonomous working. Yeah, and LoRa plus battery is working. Solution. Yeah. yeah. So now, hmm. when we think about it, a big issue is sensor integration. Yes. Because there are so many different kinds of sensors out there. Right. So when you think about it, Pepperell and Fuchs is a sensors company. I like to think of it as you're a sensors company now trying to figure out how to make sure all those sensors work in the IoT. You got to add the connectivity, you got to add the logic, you got to add. So, what are some of the issues involved in that? Well, the experience with LoRaWAN is extremely good. Yeah, because the communication is so well standardized. Yeah, that uh, the connection to the different uh, server. Uh, yeah, LoRaWAN network servers has never been a problem. Yeah, it works normally almost plug and play. <laughs> almost. Yeah. Well, you know, little, well, little tweaking maybe, <laughs> but, but in general, uh, really no problem. Yeah. And of course, if we, uh, if we add another sensor, we, we have to change the payload and things like that. Yeah. But this is, this is on a, on a moderate basis of software changes. Yeah. So basically, yeah, it, it works fine. You know, and that's an interesting answer coming from an engineering company to say, well, it's almost plug and play because mm -hmm. yeah. there are so many things in engineering that aren't plug Absolutely. and play. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the word is almost uh, not to use anymore because it's misused so often. Yeah, everybody says plug and play, but it never really is plug and play. But I, I must say, Laura Wan is really very convincing in this aspect, yeah. I mean, there are so many servers uh, and stacks uh, on the world, but the communication is so well described that uh, that it works. Uh, no, um, we had never a problem yeah, in integrating our sensors. Yeah. So now mm. people are having problems. So that's telling me that it's more that they're having issues with the integration, that they're having to have a better understanding of the technology so they can deploy their... How much help do you give your customers to help them understand that? Yeah, okay. We are typically not service oriented <laughs> because we, we deliver, we are used to deliver components and typically to OEMs who understand the business. So that's a little bit new for us. Therefore, the systems integrator, integrators and also the, the network suppliers are the partners for us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and we mm -hmm. make sure, yeah, if we, for instance, if you take Things Network or you take Actility or somebody else, our units are already uh, integrated in their network. 
Yeah. So the end user can just select, I want to have the Pepper and Fuchs Wilson, and the communication is already there. Already there. And also the, the decoding of the payload is already integrated. Yeah. Wherefore, for us, delivering the information to the customer is not the problem anymore. The problem starts later with the business case. <laughs> the business case and the integration of this information in other IT platforms around, that is, from my experience, the bigger problem. And this is not in our hands, yeah, because right. this is in the hands of the end user, more or less. Yeah. But then again, the easier you make your solutions to deploy, the less trouble that they're going to have with it, right? Yeah, yeah, but we have not a solution for the fin final end customers. Yeah, We deliver data, but you have to do something with the data. Well, and that means they have to have a good handle on it. <laughs> yeah, but this is not our business anymore. So we are not an IT company. We are not a solutions provider, so to speak. Yeah. Got you. Well, you, but you are providing the tools to create that solution. To a certain point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, when we talk about monitoring, in process monitoring, environmental monitoring, systems monitoring, that also extends into the macro world too, right? I understand you're doing things with flood management and the things yeah. along those lines. Why don't you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, that actually came from this occurrence two years ago in Ahrtal, which was for German, I mean, in the world are much worse cases, yeah? But for Germany, it was a catastrophe. Yeah. And the people say, we don't want to see that happen again. Could you explain just for the audience that doesn't know what happened, what happened? Yeah, we had, we had a terrible rain. And uh, this uh, Bergische Land where it happened is, a, is a, not a flat area. It's it has a, a lot of hill, yeah, hills and valleys. And the water co collected and the river went over the side and, uh, and the whole city was more or less Washed split away. over. Yeah. Really? And we had 134 dead persons, yeah, casualties, yeah. And the material damage is... Uh, Millions. They say, no, only the industry had uh, about 600 million in damage. So we're talking but billions. If you look, seven billions for streets, railways, electrical wires. Not what to mention the human cost. And the human costs are the main thing where we say, okay, we cannot stop rain, but we want to inform the people in due time that a danger is coming. So how did, so explain the solution a little bit then. The solution is, I mean, we are, water metering is nothing new. Yeah, that's existing since 100 years, I guess. Yeah, But here we are now observing a complete area because we have reservoirs in the woods where we can store water if it floods comes over, yeah. So you have some some areas where you can collect water that it doesn't create too much damage. The point is, nobody knows the status of these reservoirs, yeah. And the idea is threefold. The one idea is to get a complete picture of all the water carrying. Uh, yeah, things, yeah, like rivers, like canals, like reservoirs, Ponds, stems, lakes. yeah, and so on. So, first of all, collecting data, more or less in real time. I mean, if you are talking real time, not in milliseconds, but maybe in an hour or right. so. Right, which yeah. you all, for that is, that's real which time enough. Much better than today, yeah. And then the second thing is, okay, collecting this data. Now we have a lot of data, yeah. And this is the, usually the problem everywhere, what to do with the data. Yeah, um, I mean, big data, but not clever data. <laughs> yeah. So the next thing is where the University of Wuppertal is included, uh, generating a neural network mm -hmm. where all this data come together, are evaluated in a so-called time series analysis, that the goal is not only to acquire this data, but to be able to make a prediction what is happening in the next two, three, four, five hours so that people have time to react, can leave their house or whatever. Yeah, That is that is the goal of this development. It's actually now government funded yeah, because it's a, it's a lighthouse, a flagship project in Nordrhein-Westfalen. Uh, as an example for Germany on, and even wider, it will be open source. That means if this research project in two years is finished, it will be available for everybody. That's very cool that you're going to yeah. give the solution to other people. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, 
would it would, would this technology have helped in uh, Libya, where they just recently had that horrible? Uh, the well, that was more of a dam breaking. So I guess that would that would, you you'd know, but it would this, be <laughs> this comes extremely fast. Yeah, dam. I mean, you need probably additional me measures mm -hmm. to to handle something like that. The dams were in terrible condition. Nobody watched it. I mean, the things which should happen before. What in Germany is usually the case. <laughs> right. Well, but then again, that would mean, you know, as you were saying, you're a sensor company. That would mean maybe strain sensors in the concrete or sensors, you know, vibration yeah. sensors yeah. on the wall itself yes. or things like yes. that. Yes. Uh, also here we are, we are including many more. I mean, the rainfall is observed. Yeah. Uh, the wind uh, uh, speed and direction is observed. So there are a lot of data f flowing into the system to give a complete picture. Yeah. So it's becoming very complex. But what I'm seeing, we have all had, a, had discussions here on site, that people in the United States are interested, yeah, because they have in the mountain similar problems. Right. Yeah. Uh, simply, something builds up uh, because of ice melting and things like this, and uh, the message comes too late. Yeah. I mean, you cannot change that occurrence as such. It's all about telling the people, the be warning. careful. Yes. Right. Very cool. Yeah, that's well, that's the topic. You know, and that, that's one of the things that I love about, you know, as we progress with technology, we're creating new solutions yeah. that actually are making the world, you know, you, people, our oh, technology, uh, yeah. I'm like, no, it's really helping people yeah. in a lot of yeah. ways. Yeah, and they even think further because we have now, because of this climate change, with the situation, more rain at one time, but dry areas at the other time. And uh, those communities are already thinking about changing their whole water management in a sense that they can store, if, if these high rainfalls come, they store uh, water somewhere. Divert it yeah. somewhere. In and if the dry areas come, they have some reservoirs. Yeah. So we, we also reach a situation of water management in general to, get, to cope with these Unequality of occurrences, yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of rain suddenly, and then nothing. three months nothing. <laughs> yeah, and then we have the opposite problem. Yeah, and you can can use such a system in future also for general water management. Yeah, I mean not drinking water, but the environmental water. Right. Well, mm -hmm. knowledge is power, right? And we really do need to work on this stuff. Absolutely, and I mean this is a topic everywhere in the world. Yeah. Yes. I mean, of course. This system requires a certain stand of technology. Yeah? So for developed countries, I don't know whether it's for Libya or Africa. So, but in the United States, there are definitely there are already talks going on. Yeah, they are definitely interested in something like this. Yeah. Well, so am I. Yeah. So am I, my friend. So yeah. Before okay. I let you go, do you have any yeah. final thoughts for our audience, or some tips about the company, or just thoughts that you'd like to leave us with? Oh, that's a surprising question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the, these, these wireless technologies should, uh, should uh, create more awareness. Yeah? Specifically, LoRa One is so easy to, to implement. Yeah? And it's really working. I, we are working now with LoRa One for four or five years. Yeah? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the technology as such has never created a problem. Yeah? I mean, there are areas where there is no LoRa One. <laughs> it is, is, so to speak, the deficiency we have, but I can only say LoRaWAN is a fantastic technology. Yeah? So people should really do something. <laughs> well, I agree. It. I yeah. agree, Wolfgang. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time during this pleasure. busy show. I yeah. really appreciate it. It was a pleasure. Thank you very pleasure's much. pleasure's mine. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>